What's going on, people? It's Hajimoto here, and we're going to talk through tuning our Umarex gauntlets now that we have our tuning kit installed. As you may remember in a previous video, I went through the entire installation procedure of putting the kit in. And while I'm not going to necessarily go through all of those steps again, I may refer to them so that you can get your head around how this adjuster works and what its function is. Uh, first, let's make sure that we cover all bases and say that if you're ever going to be working on the rifle and you're going to be taking it out of the stock, please make sure you degas the rifle. Um, the reason that I constantly tell folks to degas the rifle is the bottom screw that goes through the bottom of the stock actually is holding the block that's behind the pressure valve and that actually is part of the safety feature of the rifle. If you take that screw out and the rifle is under pressure, it's just one less thing that's stopping that valve from slamming backwards and possibly coming out the rear of the rifle if you have it overpressurized or something. And remember, Umarex also recommends that you depressurize if you're going to take the action out of the stock. The reason that I'm bringing that up is you may remember in the uh, original installation video, I told you that uh, you could modify your stock so that you never have to take the action out for this adjustment or if you prefer not to drill a hole in your stock you will have to take it out of the action to make that adjustment but just remember I still say degas it then make your adjustment you'd have to fill it back up and put it back in again is it a pain in the neck yes but if you want to be safe that's the way to do it um, or you drill the hole and you can make an adjustment now that we've got that said, what you're going to need handy in order to make your adjustment is going to be a 5 64ths Allen wrench, which will fit into the back of the preload adjuster, and that's going to be our power adjustment. What I want to do is cover some general, uh, general rules here as it relates to variables. Please do not fast forward. It's important that you understand these variables because they all have to do with the questions you may have as to why you're not getting the performance that I'm talking about or the next guy. Remember the variables we have to deal with. What is the pressure that the regulator is allowing through? Some people are at stock 12, 1100. Others adjusted theirs to 12, 13, 14, 15. All of those are a different variable. The poppet valve, now that you've replaced it using the kit, is a smaller valve, which means the pressure that's in the regulator has less of an effect of making it difficult to open. It's much easier for that valve to open now. That's why you don't need as strong of a spring. So the hammer, when it slides forward, it doesn't need to hit that valve as hard as it did previously in order for it to dispense the air to push the projectile downrange. So now that we understand the variables there, know that the preload adjustment is very similar to the carnival strongman game where you have the hammer you hit the button and it throws a weight up to ring the bell what i want you to think about is if a man slams that and rings the bell every time if he increases how hard he hits it he's still hitting the bell it's not going to go through the bell it's, it's he's wasting energy if he tries any harder so keep that analogy in mind when you think of your hammer sliding forward and hitting the valve. You want only enough energy to ring the bell. And the bell is whatever the feet per second is you're trying to get to. So let's talk a little bit about feet per second because you need a chronograph. It's vitally important that you own or have access to a chronograph because it's going to be the only way you know that every adjustment you make, what impact it's having on the feet per second of the projectile. So we have the weight of the pellet to consider. We have how much pressure the regulator is putting out and how much preload the hammer is going to have. This is what's known as the tune. This is what you'll be working towards for finding that sweet spot of efficiency and reaching the number that you want to reach. In this tutorial, I'm going to give a very, very simple instruction on exactly how you can do that, the, how you achieve it, and the variables you'll have to deal with in order to make that happen. Please understand that my rifle's configuration has a regulator pressure of 1300, as you may remember in my regulator adjustment video. Mine is at 1400, excuse me, I said 13, it's at 1400. Here's a picture that I had pr produced that was part of that video. So my results are different than yours are going to be. 
because your regulator pressure may be different. And in making the adjustments, here's how we're going to do it. I'm going to assume that you made the modification to your stock and I'm going to be referencing this viewpoint here. And as you notice, I'm always going to be referencing clockwise or counterclockwise as though you're behind the rifle. So from the back of the rifle, looking towards the breech, counterclockwise is going to decrease your power. Clockwise will increase your power. Now in my particular instance, if I took and backed it off all the way so that the preload was putting no adjustment on mine just out of the box, I call that lock, lock, low setting. And then you're going to see some shot strings at the end of this video. And low setting means I'm not influencing any preload at all. As you turn it out, my suggestions to you are do them in quarter turn increments and then write down how much of an effect those quarter turn increments have on your speed. Then you can put in a 14 grade pellet for instance and if you're trying to get it at 900 feet per second you can slowly adjust it and then write down how many turns out it took for you to get there. That's going to be your tune. You don't want to waste a bunch of preload energy in order to have a pellet go beyond where you want. This is why a chronograph is vitally important. It's really that, that simple. You don't want to constantly take your regulator apart to make changes to your pressure. Because this valve is so efficient, I truly believe there is no need to have your regulator above 1400 PSI in order to achieve whatever feet per second you're trying to reach. That is my opinion and that's how I'm moving forward. In the following pictures that are coming up, I'm just going to illustrate exactly what you're looking for when you're making your adjustments in this clockwise, counterclockwise configuration. This is what the wrench would look like from the side view so you can make those adjustments. And here's a small video of me adding one full turn. So I'm increasing the power here. And now I'm going to return it back by decreasing the power one full turn. So that would be one full turn in either direction. Now some shot strings to show exactly what low power, medium power on a gauntlet with a stock 13 cubic inch bottle. Thank you.